So one of the other things we run in our room is we have cameras. The one on the bottom, as you see with the little antenna, is a wireless camera that goes to the bunkhouse so that the person sleeping in the bunkhouse can just look at the screen, the very small LCD screen, and see what's going on with the gauges or whatnot. Um, the camera above is hooked to a TV screen that's in the other room, in the boiling room, so that the evaporator guy and the RO operator can see what's going on in here from the other rooms. Um, none of those are hooked to phones or anything remotely. We haven't, we haven't gotten that far, but. A little backup, we have a backup propane heater here. Um, in case power is out, we do have electric heat in here. Uh, we just threw that in this year just, just because it has been cold, so we put that in. Now, that noise that you can hear behind me, or in the background, I should say, is this vacuum pump running. This has been running for probably, let's see, maybe a month now, I guess. Probably about a month this has been running. Um, we're froze up here today. Obviously, we're getting ready to kick off here this weekend. This is a 10 horsepower Nash Elmo water pump. Water coming in over there where that yellow valve is. Just, uh, comes from a spring, a dug spring. Feeds the water in. You see the water going back out. That line, that that three-inch line is the vent line. Actually goes back down and outside. That's that's just the, the breather hole for the exhaust for the air. Okay, so you see that the water goes down right there. And that that three-inch, two-inch adapter from the 45, the water goes down, and then we have a trap right here to help with the noise. Um, it'll slow the water down a little bit, and then it goes down in a vent. It goes down. It goes down. So we're running uh, Titan, the P-Series drive. This is an older drive, and I tell you, I, I love these drives. Um, they're, they're relatively easy to set up. Not too bad. Um, you know, just the application to this is just awesome. We have a transducer, transducer up there, reads the vacuum levels. So, you look here, see this screen. The 38 is the hertz. That's the speed of the motor right now. 60 hertz would be the maximum speed. So 60 hertz would be, you know, full bore, full throttle. So if you went out there and opened a valve on one of the lines, on a, on a big line and let all the air out, you know, it would rev up and go to 60 hertz. Now the R, that's the run. That's where it's set. That's my, that's the set that I can set. Okay. The F on, on here is the feedback. That's the feedback from the transducer. That's what it's actually reading inside the vacuum. Now, 50 hertz, my set point at 50 hertz makes 25 inches of vacuum, okay? So if I set that at 50 hertz and make 25 inches of vacuum, which we're above, okay? The feedback is actually 53. And as you can see, the vacuum is, you know, 27 and maybe some change there, just a hair above. And that's why you're seeing that. So it means that the system's actually tighter. It's making more vacuum. There's more vacuum in the system than the set point is even at. This is good. We want to see this on the heaviest day of the year. This is what we want to see. Now, 30, it's, re, it's running at 38 because that is my low point. That's my set on the low point. That's as low as I let it go. If I go much lower than that, the, uh, the pump starts making all kinds of funny noises and and things like that. And then I gotta open a valve that's on the side of the pump. There's a, there's a little valve on the side of the pump there. Uh, that lets air into the into the pump a little bit. Um, don't need to do that. To get down to 36, it, it makes a lot of noise and it requires a lot more maintenance. Now, if I get much tighter than that, if it gets to 54 or even 55, um, which it will do when we get running and such, I, I, I froze at night or something like that. I have a valve here that I can open and actually trick trick the transducer. You see, with that valve open, 
that valve's open right now and you see the air reading and it's lowering it. But what that does is let air into the pump so that it isn't uh, it isn't just grinding away at, with, with, with too much vacuum. It doesn't really happen too often, but sometimes it, it will. Um, so in this screen, this is a screen I, I use most days. And then we go into this screen, and that's where we can change things. Go to program, and that's my set point right there. That's how I adjust the set point with the arrows, and you, you, know, you, sh you shift it over, and you can change that right there. You know, do whatever you want, then you hit enter, and it goes back to that screen. And as I said, this is an older one. The newer ones are just a hair different. Um, and then two clicks down, and we get to see what get to see what's going on. I tell you, if you get a chance to run a three phase pump with a transducer, or you're thinking about it, it is definitely an awesome tool. Um, this machine, coupled with our vacuum sensing system in the woods, is just it's just awesome because we have so so much knowledge about what's going on um, you know the vacuum sensors will give us a direction to go but this gives us like an overall of what's happening out in the woods um, and this is what we've been using before we had the vacuum sensors in the woods so it works well um, obviously a water pump doesn't make as high a vacuum as let's say a claw pump or a oil pump some of the some of the higher end oil pumps now are, are making 29 inches um, and the screw pumps the new screw pumps are doing, you know, 29.9 inches. However, all three of those style pumps, claw, oil, screw, those cannot take in moisture. And you know with maple syrup, with maple sap, sucking sap out of the tree, frozen conditions, 24-7 running, we have nothing but moisture. So, I say run water pumps. And I know a lot of you guys can't get the water or whatever. Um, you gotta kind of figure that out. Get some water, dig a spring if you can. The reason I say run the water pump is because it's bulletproof. Yes, you may not be able to pull 29 inches, but you're also not gonna explode the pump if you have a releaser failure or a moisture trap failure, which so often occurs you can run it in here. Now also on a daily basis, the moisture that's in the system doesn't bother me, doesn't affect me a bit. We got moisture coming in here on a daily basis, I don't care. Gets right in there, whatever. I'm running 24 seven right now, it's eight degrees outside. Don't care, which is a little bit of moisture in there, it goes right through the pump. We've been running water systems now for probably 15, 18 years. And they are bulletproof. We, we just don't have those type of issues. I mean, obviously nobody wants to run sap through their system, but it does happen sometimes. Um, and this is a more cost effective way to not spend a lot of money. So, you know, when you blow your pump up, it costs a lot of money. So those are my two cents. And uh, good luck with the season, guys.